Welcome to another episode of We Boinked Your Mom. <laughs> <laughs> if you want us to fuck your mom, send in your requests. Dads too. Dads too. We're opening our... Um, Request lines? <laughs> the request lines are <laughs> no, open. Open. <laughs> open. <laughs> Cheers. I'm good to see you again. Because I've never seen you. <laughs> yeah, man. Since I came downstairs, mm -hmm. hadn't seen you in I remember the last time I saw you, we were both asleep in this exact couch. Cuddling. So there's a few things you want to talk about today. I had a few ideas. First Maybe off, funny stuff. how much we hate people. Um, second was... Pirates. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. yeah. Favorite movie. I think we should also publicly apologize because we've been watching a lot of Two and a Half Men. And we did not realize all the shit that Charlie Dude, Sheen has done. have you guys <laughs> ever looked up Charlie Sheen? I know some maybe of the older crowd that was there for it. Well, I guess we were too, but I didn't pay attention. This motherfucker has got like... A, a big rap sheet. A big rap sheet of cancellation. That is one material. of the things that was not on the list for today, so we're not going to get into that. <laughs> but... We just wanted to say, we only watch it for the art of the show. We are not... Tiger's blood. Yes. Tiger's blood. That was a Charlie Sheen quote, dude, oh. when he was losing his mind. I remember being a senior, <coughs> and Mr. Souffle, mm. a senior English teacher, he would make hella Charlie Sheen jokes, because he loved Charlie Sheen. He didn't know what Charlie Sheen had done. He did. Souffle isn't a Latino name, is it? it sounds like French. Yeah. Souffle. He was Latino for show, though, so I'm curious if like, his... He changed it? No, nah, probably he was adopted. <laughs> Surrogate father. Yes, Tyler? Tyler's making a special appearance. Come here, Tyler. No, but it brings us to our, the first part of our segment, which is free base. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? Uh, crack. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not it. So I, um, well, you know, Denise made a good point when we did a podcast with her the other day. That podcast. Over the last few podcasts, we've talked about similar stuff. Right. But I realize it's because everywhere we go, people ask us the same fucking questions. Similar stuff. So that's why I think this is a good opportunity to open those doors. So don't you know? make my skin flu joke. <laughs> Apparently not. Okay. Because it's old. Yeah. And the first... Hey. I get off the right couch. <laughs> Come to your bed. Thank you. Come here. Oh, look at Joe Ben. And I wanted to kind of talk about our equipment, dude. I know that... A lot of other musician friends are going to hear this, and I know Realize that... we don't know what we're talking about? <laughs> that too, but the journey that we all go through as musicians, because equipment is expensive, dude. Dude. Equipment is expensive as fuck. And I love telling the story about... Was it your first amp? Was that your first one, the Marshall? Well, it was my first, like, real, like, performing amp, I guess, because I had... Remember the little Marshall? But, I mean, that... that the battery one. No, 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 no. Wasn't no, it like no. a little? No, that we had that here at the house. That, I'm talking oh, about yeah. like the one that came with the Ibanez. Like it was like a, it was like a, what do you call it? Like a bundle type of shit. Like, yeah. Internet, TV, and cable. Like it was like guitar. But then amp. you got the little amp after. No, and then I got the Marshall amp. That was the little amp, the, the, yeah. the little small one. No, 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 no. I already let go of that. The, okay. The Marshall amp. Yeah, my very first one was that that small Marshall amp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the big cabinet. No, oh, the okay. the little one. Yes. Because the <laughs> my fault. The the story I always remember with was it was like a little combo amp, like everyone starts with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you used to oh, put it bad. on a chair. Oh yes. So it would be louder. So when we were like fourteen and we play all these shows, you would literally have to grab like a, I don't know. I always remember a green plastic chair. I don't know if that was at your house. Oh yeah, that we did have. Green and we put it on chairs. top of there, and that's how it would. Be louder because it wasn't on the floor. Right. Yeah, my fault. I thought you were talking about the big or the no. See, cabinet. that yeah. that's another step way forward. You're right. When we got the you're cab. right. Yeah, that was my very first amp. And that's then, my fault. What bass amp was I using? You know what? I was using that one that we borrowed. That line six from Big John. <laughs> I was gonna say it, but shout out to Big John. Shout out to you for funding the band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we borrowed his amp and never returned it. I don't look so sad about it, dude. And it was like 12 years ago. Longer? It was like four, like 16 years ago, dude. I'm going to start telling people I'm 26. <laughs> That's you. You're like a middle-aged white woman that yeah. wants to stick to an age from now on? 26. I'm starting to use Botox. Can you tell? Yeah, your cheeks look great. Yeah, I figured instead of uh, spending money on a new album, I'm just going to spend money on my face. Getting the image right. That's real money. Right <laughs> <there>. <laughs> and I remember... 
<coughs> I also got <coughs> my first squire. Well, my first bass was when I was 12. No, like the Ibanez I got bass? the black Ibanez. But then I traded it for an acoustic or some shit, and then I got that little telly squire. And then when I officially wanted to start playing bass when we were 14, and we started no application fee, I had like a little squire jazz bass that Layla's mom funded. Technically, we paid for her quince, and we charged, I don't know, $200. Talk about a really bad performance for a paid gig, huh? Man, we were 14. What did they expect? I thought we did pretty good. I mean, when but we I mean, auditioned, we, we did good. She liked it. She 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 gave us the good I just light. remember her coming over and saying how loud we were. And we were like, well, yeah, we're a band. But they wanted us to be more like background music. And, dude, if you remember, like, not that I'm a good singer now, but back then... Trying to cover Blink-182 was like Trying to cover Mexican, Led Zeppelin. Trying to, yeah, I was like a little Mexican singing. Like, you know those Mexicans that hang out and play the keyboard? <laughs> yeah. And it's like... I ran, yeah, I ran so far away. I sounded like Fess. Damn. And I said, good day. And But she, playing that show, got me that first bass. And dude, I used that bass until I was like 18. What bass was that? The Mark Hoppers one? That's when I got the Mark Hoppus oh. one when I was 18. It was a, like a Mexican Fender replica. Used. It was like 300 bucks. Because I remember my dad, my brother, and I all put 100 each to get nice. that. So Keep it in the I started using that black bass until like two years ago. What about you? For the, At the very beginning, you had well, I used the, the red Ibanez. Ibanez. I used the Ibanez up until like maybe I was 17, 16. And then my, I think my mom got me that Gibson. Or sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, the, right. the SG Epiphone. The Epiphone. The yeah. Epiphone is Damn, I loved that. And it was red as well. Like yeah. the wood red. Yeah. And I like those Gs. I felt like, especially at that time, I felt like I was playing a mixture of a homeboy with the shorts. And, like Angus Young yeah, and, uh, and Jimmy Jimmy Page. Yeah, it was yeah. the times. That was what we were super into. Homeboy with the shorts. <laughs> I knew what you were talking about. <laughs> and um, you had the Marshall Little Amp, and you had the Ibanez until you got the SG. What was that until we left El Paso? No. And then you got the house sack when we were in high school. Um, I had... Um, I think I did have the SG for quite a while, but then at some point I ended up playing a, a you went through a few guitars that people, but like, I don't remember why. Cause I always had the, SG. I think it was electronic issues. I still have the SG. I think there was electronic issues when like we were plugging into amps and stuff and instead of getting it fixed, someone would be like, Oh, I got a guitar I could use. And you would just use anyone's guitar. Oh yeah, that's true. And then amp wise, I think we were juniors when you got the half stack. Yeah. That's not right. Yeah. And it was a Marshall right. head. But it was not a Marshall cab. It was a PV cab. It was cab. a PV cab. I mean, sorry, it was a PV head. It was a PV head. It was a PV head and a Marshall cab. And a Marshall cab. Yeah. And then, do you do you remember in, as much detail about the story of when we had to get it fixed? Hell yeah, I do, dude. That was a scarring moment in my life. So, so that's when I learned to pay your bills. The head was fucking <laughs> up, and we found someone in El Paso, like this old man that smoked more cig more cigarettes than I do. And he he fixed him out of his house. Yeah. And we yeah. found him and then can you tell him much as you remember and I'll tell you, what I remember? I remember this man was like a hermit type of dude. Yeah. Like you, I tell like he had like two or three friends. They like smoke cigarettes and maybe play a little poker every mm -hmm. now and then. He probably had a Jack Daniels fucking addiction. And he was a scary old bloke, dude. You know, it's like a chubby white dude, right? Yeah, I don't think he was. I, I remember him being lanky, old, and and skinny, lanky. You know, like, damn. Yeah, and, like, and then what? Like, what happened uh, when we went to go drop it off? Um, I think we left both the cabinet and the head. Yeah, and he told us he was gonna check it out. He gave us like a estimate of what like he was gonna have to do, and that was it. He was like, "I got you." He was basically like, "I got you." He was like, "I love fixing amps like this. This is my shit." Not verbatim. Yeah, no, but he was cool. He was down. He was he was really nice about it, and he. I mean, honestly, he was nice through the whole part. You know what I mean? But I didn't have money to pay him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. So he called you and said it was done. So when he called me the first time, he was like, "This is what I'm gonna do to it, and this is what's gonna happen, and this is how much it's gonna be." I was like, "Cool." I thought he was gonna give me like a week or two, you know. But he was done the next day, dude. Which makes sense now that I know a little bit about amps. Yeah, like, it's if you knowing that part, fucking hard. Yeah, like you just gotta switch parts out, basically. And he charged me like 150, which I don't know if it's a lot or not, but we were juniors and I yeah, didn't have a job. Yeah, it was 2010, you know? And, you know? And he called me and he was like, hey, well, um, 
it's ready. And I was like, all right, cool. And I didn't pick it up because I didn't have the money. And I took like a week to pick it up or something like that because my mom didn't have money either. And then I called him and I was like, hey, I'm going to go pick it up. And he was like, oh, well, it's going to be 300 now. And I was like, why? And he was like, because the storage fee, bro. And I was like, storage fee? And then he gave me this whole spiel about how, like, dude, I, I have other clients. Like, I don't have room to keep your shit in here. Like, which makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I... And I, I remember, he didn't he have, like, a cluttered-ass garage? He did. No, his whole like, house was cluttered. Ha- yeah, like, everything was equipment. Yeah. Equipment, head to toe, just fucking tubes everywhere and amps and strings and guitars. and mm, Yeah, yeah. I have, like, a vague memory of, like, stepping over stuff. Like a hermit hoarder. I Literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn, that's crazy. And then... What did he tell you when you picked it up that we learned? Well, he was like, hey, man, like, you got to pay people. He was like, you got to pay people. Like, you're, you're wasting people's time. You know, Basically, I don't remember exactly what he said, but something like that. And it was just like, what I learned from it was learn how to fix your own shit so that you don't have to rely on other people I, because you can't pay them. I remember <laughs> him also being like, when you work with these, they're like oh, people. Yeah. You have to be sensitive with them. Like, you, have, you can't talk bad about them. So I remember I was going to play a show and you were like, yeah, my fucking stupid ass amp, like, blah, blah, blah. And then it just stopped working. And you were like, oh, my God, it was because I was mean to it. And you, like, apologized. And you're like, yo, my bad. Like, please help me out. Like, just play the show with us. And <laughs> it kicked back on. Like, literally. And we looked at each other like, like, this dude put some fucking voodoo on this shit, yeah, dude. Man. But he told us, like, brands like this, they're electronics. They have an aura, too. And you have to be nice to them if you want them to treat you right. I'll never forget that. It's and I was like, shit, though. hey, fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? The fix and, um, <laughs> come here. and after that, I think that's what we moved over here with for sure. Yes. Yeah. Because I remember the cats tearing yeah. up or Earl tearing up the line six bass amp. And I had that guitar forever. Well, no, you had, a, you had an amp. Oh, 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 wait. You had an Ampeg for a minute, like the Wait, one that would tilt. It was the same time you got the half stack. Yeah, you had. An I Ampeg. got the original Ampeg. I mean, now they're called BA 115s. I don't know if it was still that back then, but it was 115 inch sub, and dude, <coughs> that amp was the shit. Yeah. The tone on it was fantastic. That's when I moved over, and I found that I wanted to use flat wound strings mm. because it gave me more of like a deep low tone. And I wasn't the tone quite... is in your fingers, Andy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I remember I wasn't po- I was still using a pick back then too. There's no reason to have so all these knobs. I wasn't like popping a lot, so I didn't need those highs to come through as much as I wanted the lows. Mm. And isn't that always been your issue? No, well, it was until recently because mm. now I'm popping more and slapping. But I remember the uh, the guitar when I was 18. Like I said, I walked into a guitar center one time, all of us, and I remember we were with a homie, and he was like. Why does that one only have one knob? And I was like, oh, that's because Mark and Tom... Like, I started just explaining it. I was like, that's because they already set their tone in there, so all they wanted was a volume knob so they could turn it up and down because that's all they needed. And then I went and was like, wait, is that a Mark Hoppus? And I grabbed it on the back. It said, like, Mark Hoppus. And it was, like, black on black. It was, like, a jazz uh, jazz bass with, like, a P bass head or neck because he, like, mixed them up. And, and I was like, I have to have it. It was right by my 18th birthday, actually. And that's when they bought me that. So we played all of our shows of 18, 19. And then when we moved here, I had that. And my dad, when we were 16, same time when you got that stack, I got the Ampeg. So I used that Ampeg and that Mexican Fender for 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Maybe like 12 years? Yeah. And then what was our most recent? Because uh, you, you got the PRS. I got the PRS like in 2015 or something like that because I got a credit card. Ah, yeah. And I maxed it out on that. Good call. Yeah. And then um, I had the PR, I mean the PRS. You're still using the half stack? Mm, for a little bit. And then um, what year did we go to Big Bear for, for my, my and Sarah's birthday? 2017 sounds about right. Really? Damn, it's been a while. It's 2023. That makes sense. Uh, that's when I, when we came back or before we left, I bought that other Fender amp. It was a Fender Mustang, right? It was a Fender Mustang, yeah. It was a digital. Yeah. It's a cool little Fender. And then you used the, the Fender amp and the PRS guitar for a few years. Up until recently. And then when did you get your most recent? The guitar? I got it like a couple years ago now. Like 2020? 2021? 2020? 
Yeah. Um, it's a uh, what? What series was it? I think American you said Performer. Up? American Performer. Mm-hmm. American Performer. What? 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 Co- it's not like a sunburst. No. It's like a. It's like a gay burst. <laughs> Is it? no. It's I don't know. It's um. I don't know. I can't even think of the color right now. I I can see it, but it's I don't almost know orangey it. and. There's some white there. But it's wood. Yeah. It's like a wood color. For sure. And then most recently, 2023, right? The beginning of this year's when. When you got the app? We got it for Christmas, didn't we? Was it Christmas? I don't know. When did no, we go I think buy it? it? I think it was January. Was it? No, I don't think so. Because we got it before the show. Did you have show. it before the show? Yeah, we had it Okay, the so show. December. And then that is a Mesa Boogie 50? Or what's the... Yes. Mesa Boogie 50 all tube amp. Oh, I can tell you right here. And then I recently, like a month ago, I just moved up to my... Ampeg half stack, I guess it'd be called, right? Mm-hmm. I have the four by ten cab, and I got the, I got the Pro series. It's a Boogie Fillmore fifty. Fillmore fifty. Sorry. Fillmore fifty all tube amp, and now I got the. What's the name of the head? I got the Ampeg Pro Pro five, or some shit like that. I'm not sure. It's the one that has the nine band EQ in the front, and has the foot switch to go back and forward between the two. And then, oh, well, before that, I'm sorry, I forgot about my, my bass. I want to say 2020. I want to say 2020. I bit the bullet, and I was like, I need a new guitar. So I went. Well, yeah, it was a little bit after I got mine. Yeah. It was a little bit after I got mine. So if you got it 2020, 2021, I got it a little after. And it was the, the one I'm using now. It's a Cobra Blue American Ultra jazz oh. american ultra jazz yeah because with my guitar center discount i got like a great price and the warranty was really good so i was like what's the like best one i could get without getting a vintage or a custom blah blah, blah. and the ultra was hey you know it's funny Those reading vintages are pretty do you cool. remember being a kid and reading like oh it has a very ultra responsive neck and uh oh but and i was like shut the fuck up yeah. and it makes me realize when you're that young and you're playing, not even in age, but like when you're young and playing, you don't need the nicest equipment in the world. Like, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you could get the same effect from a three hundred guitar. Because even guitar now, dude, even now, I don't feel like I, I am, I should be playing that guitar. You know what I mean? So Why do you say that? So I'm scared to fucking touch it sometimes, so because I'm gonna break it or something. You know? <laughs> really? So I get it. No, yeah. I, well, yeah, no, but yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Yes, <laughs> I do feel like that. I do feel like that, but it's because it's like, I've never, I've never been able to have nice things. Mm. Not because, oh yeah, because I couldn't afford them, and also because I couldn't be trusted with them. You fucking even break shit. Even with like my clothes and stuff, like, <laughs> get them full of chile, you know. Like, That's facts. You can never. I'm not wear talking white. mecco, like real chile. <laughs> <sauce>. <laughs> and um, so it's, for me, it's always been like, just get the cheaper stuff because you're gonna break it anyways, you know. Yeah, I feel. But that. when I got that one, it, you can tell the difference of like. When you play, so yeah, I mean, that's why I kind of not disagree, but respectful, respectfully disagree, because like, dude, if you're a kid that knows what they're doing and actually knows their sound, like some of these fucking kids. Well, on but Instagram, that's why I said it's not about age; it's about youth and your playing. Oh, okay. Like, if it's your first guitar, you don't need a three thousand yeah, dollar guitar because you you're not gonna be able to tell the difference until, like you said, you're advanced enough that you found a tone or you see the difference. Because now that I've played a a, a nice guitar, you can't go back. Yeah. And you know what the biggest thing was for me, dude? The tuning knobs. Oh, yeah. The tuning knobs on my current bass to any other bass I've ever played, even when I borrowed someone's or anything, it's just night and fucking day, dude. Like, I can tune this a little bit, and it actually moves with it. Mm. Where with my, like, Mexican Fender, I would have to sometimes, like, turn it much harder, and then it would, like, jump up 20 cents, you know? Yeah, that's something I noticed, too, about this one. Like, the tuning stays really consistent. And, like... Since I was scared to fucking touch it, I, I, I learned a lot about how to fucking set it up and stuff. Mm. So I have it set up pretty nicely to like my liking. Yeah. So that's cool because I never would have thought of doing that with the PRS or with the Ibanex or with What the did you do exactly? You said something about the flying bridge or? I just, it's a floating bridge, but like it, it's just like, it just keeps it like like a tenth of an inch or something like that, like apart from your body. So that when you bend up, 
you, you you can actually bend it up and like and then it'll hit the the body of the guitar. Got it. You know what I mean? And to do that. So someone who doesn't use their bar a lot, they don't need to. They don't need to. to they can just have it flat on the on the body, mm. and flat on the body. Yeah, exactly. You know, so like it's just little things like that, and then like the intonation, like your bridge is really like you can do a lot with your bridge, with all those little knobs and screws that are there. They're there for a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean, so you can do a lot to like have really good intonation on your whole neck all around. And it's still something that I'm working out and trying to figure out every time I change my strings and stuff. But yeah. like, it's so interesting that like you can do that. I had read too that you have to adjust your truss rod once in a while to help get all the frets more in tune than what they are because eventually, like all wood, you know, yeah. with different weather, yeah. it, it does this and that. Well, even with playing too, because yeah, you're. I mean, that's what the action does, you know, with the truss rod. But hey, dude, if, if you don't know what you're doing with the truss rod, don't yeah, touch don't touch it. it. Yeah. I've never touched mine. Fuck no. I did it with I'm this good. one. I did like a quarter of a turn or less. Like I literally just went, and I was like, oh, I think this is good. And then I tried again, and that was it. And I never touched it again because it's not something that you should really fuck with. Fuck with, yeah. yeah. Especially if you you don't know what. Like I don't. Yeah, don't touch it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, it. I'll leave that to. Give it that to is something that I'm super proud. The older we've gotten, where I'm like, that's the whole point of the way that we, as artists and businesses, run stuff. Because it's like, yeah, I could figure out to do stuff on my own, and sometimes it's more efficient. But there's some stuff like that where eventually I could do that. But right now, when I need to adjust, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pay someone that does that for a living. Especially if you don't have time. I, time is everything. Yeah. But yeah. I'd, I'd rather not fuck up my expensive-ass guitar because I wanted to... Well, and you won't because you're you're a smart person and you know, like, don't just fucking crank it. You know yeah. what I mean? But, like, somebody that doesn't know, like, how delicate it is might just fucking... Give it a turn half it, turn and, yeah, and then snap the fucking neck. Yeah, dude. Imagine. We should buy, like, a cheap guitar one day and just experiment with it. Yeah, that's Anytime. actually... any Anyone, everyone should fucking do that, dude. Buy yeah, a cheap guitar and learn how to adjust it and learn learn what you can do with it before you start buying pedals. We should try to find a homie that, like, does this and have a podcast with them and have them explain some of these questions to us. That'd be tight. Oh, huh? like fixing guitars? Yeah, like someone yeah. that's just a tech dude, and knows, like, of a which, lot about hardware. I, about, like... I would love to get Pablo... To talk about plants, because dude, the other day I had a, I, I, I had asked him a question about bud rot, uh, through text message, and when I came when I got home, I accidentally butt dialed him on fa on like Instagram, Facetime or whatever, and, and he was just like putting like stickers on his face, <laughs> and it's hilarious, and I see it, and I'm like, oh shit, that butt dial. He's like, yeah, we ended up talking for like an hour and a half, dude, about plant growth and like plant. Like taking care of plants and shit, and like just all these things, and it was so interesting, dude. And I, the whole time I was sitting there, I was like, "This looks like something interesting to talk about in a podcast," you know? Like, mm -hmm. and and that fool knows his shit with plants. Dude, he knows his shit. I remember walking down the street, and he's like, "That's a compatibilist blow stroke." Yeah, it's like you're watching the Looney Tunes, <laughs> and the coyote, the, and the actual name of the coyote comes pops down, up down know? there. Yeah, yeah that's Pablo, he, dude. he knew his shit for sure. Yeah, but yeah, that'd be fun. Interesting, interesting equipment we have now, you know? Come a long way, dude, and. I was thinking more too about that conversation about how, um, you know, some people never move into that. And I guess if anyone ever listens for advice or anything, like we said before, you know, we made do with what we had for decade, you know, yeah. for 10 years with yeah. the most minimal stuff. And I, we had so much passion and we did so we did with what we could that it got us where we are. And I think more than ever with the level that we're at, that's why good equipment works because it just helps our sound, you know? Dude, I mean, how many YouTube videos are there that, like, put, like, Squire versus Fender? Oh, yeah, 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 and they sit there and they do these yeah, fucking... And it's like, yeah, dude, you could sit there for hours and tune your knobs and move your knobs on your amp and spend what you're going to spend on a new guitar anyways, buying pedals to make your guitar sound fucking, like, a $1,000 guitar. Or you could just buy a $1,000 guitar if you want to, you know what I mean? But if, but if you don't care about, like... Or if you don't need to do that right now, you don't need to do that right now. You can fig you can figure it out with just the knobs on your fucking amp. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that was a trip, too, with this bass, and I'm sure you'll say the same with your guitar. Dude, I left the little plastic on there for forever that had what each knob did. Because mm -hmm. there was, like, five knobs on there because one of them has the top and the bottom knob. Yeah. And one goes from one pickup to the other. One was for the highs, mids, lows, volume, and this. And I, I was like, I'm not going to memorize all of this. Yeah. You that's, know? Yeah, and that's something it. that I, I remember you pointed out how you started doing that more. And then I remember watching Santana consistently being up there turning knobs like between every parts of his songs. I was like, no wonder his shit sounds so good because he's always adapting with the song. Instead of just being stagnant, he's consistently... Or like Homeboy from Those Lonely Boys. Oh, that fool was yeah. moving a lot. Can you believe he wasn't the fucking lead singer? 
That was a shock to me. That was a shocker to me. That too. was a shock to me. Been listening to that album for what? Twenty years? Almost, almost twenty years. <laughs> no, probably twenty years for sure. How old are we? Yeah, twenty nine for sure. I was gonna say nine. We're nine years old. What year did that album come out? I don't know, dude. <laughs> Two thousand. All right. What was that? What was one of the other topics that I read? It's a down? topic that I really don't want to talk about. Which one? I don't want to talk about. It. We'll move to the next one. I wrote a few it. down. It's about it's about uh, that time we had a show in Hollywood, and then we. Oh, um, that's. That's a funny and one. And then we went back to, uh, and then we went back to the Torrance. But I'm not Mr. gonna say the name, cause I want to go back there one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that time. What's that? You, you tell us a story. No, we're gonna talk about it. We can tell the story. Tell us a story. What happened? Take us back. We played a gig in Hollywood, and it was a venue that had books everywhere. Do you need beers? I do. So I guarantee someone watching this or hearing this knows what venue I'm talking about. So please put in the comments. What the name of that venue is with all the fucking books all over the place. And we had invited a bunch. It was one of those fucking gay ass pay to play shows, you know, that nobody wants to fucking do. But we were experimenting. We wanted to see if it was worth doing it. So we sold X amount of tickets, which was obviously just our fucking friends. And the way those shows work was it's just your friends there for you anyway. So we might as well play the fucking show at our house. I digress. We had a decent turnout with a lot of our friends. And after the gig, since we played kind of early, everyone was still down to fucking, still down to party. <laughs> All right, Rick. <laughs> I know. Everyone was still down to party. And I was like, hey, there's this, this billiards pool hall and bar in Torrance. In Torrance. What the fuck is going to go bad in Torrance? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, hey, let's go to Hawthorne and party, you know? What the fuck? So we go to Torrance and everyone comes back with us. Thank you. And... As soon as we get, okay, as soon as we get there, we run into people that apparently used to work at the same location that I used to work at. Somebody he used to know, if you will. And, well, I didn't know her personally, but everyone I was with knew her. And they're like, oh, do you remember Andy? And I was like, oh, I don't. And she was like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I had, like, left that job for a year. And they're like, oh, she probably got hired when you left. So very firmly, I'm like, oh, I'm Andy. It's so good to meet you, blah, blah. And some dude just steps right in between. He's like, hey, what's up, dog? That's my girl. And I was like, okay, cool. What's, what's up, that Like, I'm, I'm Andy. And so I went to introduce myself, too. And he was just not having it. He was just, oh, real hard. And I, I was like, all right, bye. So he walks away, and I look at her, and she's like, ugh. And I was like, is that your man or what? And she's like, something like that. And I was like, all right. I don't want no fucking problems. I, I don't give a fuck. I'm walking away the fuck from you. Like, Mind I you, don't give a fuck about you. The whole time, I was drinking. Heavily. 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 I was drinking. So, <laughs> as the night progressed, we had a good friend of ours there, Chachi. And whenever Chachi comes, we're getting drunk, drunk. And as we're drinking and partying and having a good time, I could see throughout the night that those guys, that guy and his friends, were just really giving us bad look. Excuse me, giving me really bad looks. <laughs> and I was like, I think maybe once or twice when I was really drunk, I kind of looked over like, what the fuck's your problem, dude? You know? Yeah. I just kept going on with my day. And now it's about 2 o'clock on the dot. They're telling us, last call, knock your beers out, let's go. So I was going to go pee before we left. And as I'm walking by, those fools stand up. And we all kind of like get in each other's face. But I literally looked at them and I was like, yo, what the fuck's your guys' problem, dude? I was like, I'm literally going pee and we can all go on our separate way. You know? Like, bye. And then I don't give a fuck about two. you. So act two. <laughs> As I walk past them, I go to go pee. And I open the door, and who's in there? Gil and Chachi. And Measuring dicks. <laughs> <laughs> that you yeah. <laughs> I see Gil and Chachi in there. And I'm, as, as soon as I see them, I'm like, I'm like, hey, guys, let's get the fuck out of here. Like, these fools are tripping. They're trying to fight. It's a big deal. So what does Gil do? Hey, look, listen, man. Before I even say anything else, anytime Andy's in distress... I turn into the squanch. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, the Hulk. So I'm like, bro, let's get the fuck out of here because these fools are trying to fight. And Gil goes, who the fuck's trying to fight? I'm like, these fools, dude. Like, let's just get the fuck out of here. So Gil swings the door open. And as soon as he walks out, he turns and he's like, yo, who the fuck? Before he could finish that sentence, oh, someone's waiting. And they just sock, oh, open them up. I don't remember in details how many punches or whatever because we were well, always it was drinking. Like this. But it was like this. I remember very well. I came out, I said what I said, they didn't finish my sentence, which is very rude. <laughs> very rude for me, to, for them to not let me finish my sentence. 
Because what if I was going to be like, hey, who's trying to fight? And they were like, us. And I was like, oh, for sure, continue. <laughs> you know, like, and I just <laughs> walk just, away. Like, just a question of inquiry. Yeah, it was just a question in a loud voice, man. <laughs> like, I wasn't trying to start <laughs> shit, you know, allegedly. But so this is what happened. They punch me. I say, who's trying to fucking oh, get punched in the eye? Right in the eye. Dude. And I, I go back, you know, I'm like, oh, shit, what the fuck happened? And I'm, at, I'm by the bar. And then this girl comes. She's like, hey, stop. And she comes to me and she's like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, oh, it's all good, baby. I, I don't, like, I'm like, I don't even know what happened. You know, like, I'm kind of out of it. And I'm like, it's no worries, baby. Don't worry. And I guess he got mad that I kept calling her baby. And bye, he talks to me again. And the same eye, which I was again, was like, dude, hold on. Like, like, hold on, bro. Like, let me fucking <laughs> get my shit together and then punch me. You know, and, like, and that's where I remember looking up and there's a bar fight going I think on. somebody screamed. Rock fight? <laughs> no, no, I'm just, okay. I look up and there's a whole ass bar fight. And literally, everywhere you look, there's just boom, 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 boom. No, and as, and that, I, as I, that's I, happening, the bartender looks at me at me and he goes, you got to get the fuck out of here, dude. And I'm like... And he goes like, what did I do? No, no, I'm like, all right, for sure, dude. So I start walking away and then I see them fighting. I'm like, hey, we got to go. And then I don't know what was going on so, at that point. So I look over to my right and one of the homies that we were with, is already at a fucking 45 degree angle, like this. And he just, boom, hits the ground because some fool had just socked the fuck out of him, put him on his ass. And his homie who was visiting us, shout out Eli, literally like launches himself off of his shoulder and like Superman punches this fool. That was a great Another punch. guy, he just, boom, and he just gets up and he starts wailing and then like dudes come at him and they start rocking him. That was a great punch. And I'm standing there like fucked up and I'm like, this is I the think best we're one. in a bar fight, dude. So I was like, I that's need, what he tells the guy that he's looking at. He's like, I, I think we're in a bar fight. And I was like, I need to hit somebody. So the first dude I see, I didn't like cock back. I didn't step. I just went like jab, like a cat. I just, boom, I hit him. And he went like this, ah, <laughs> and he looked at me and I went, <laughs> he said, <laughs> ah, stay the fuck right there. And he just, cause like, I don't even think he was involved. You know? <laughs> I, I think he was trying wrong to get, side, dude. I think he was trying to get out. He was like, that's how you got punched out. Cause you're the wrong guy. But I remember he looked at me like, dude, what the fuck? And I was like, bitch, to you right there. And we got ourselves and we got the fuck out of there. But I looked over to you as we're trying to get out. And I mean, Gil's eye is just busted, dude. Just And he was wearing a white tee and it's just covered in fucking blood. And it is just gauging out of his eye. And we are not afraid to admit that we lost that fight. Oh. I don't know who those guys were. I don't know what we did to antagonize them. I, bro, I, you don't know. I didn't. Do, I you his, just explained his the whole story. Came up to me <laughs> and just said hi. You just explained the whole story. We were hotter guys, and they were they were felt intimidated. And you know what? They won. So yeah, I hope you uh, get your pride. Yeah. One day, someone's they're gonna hear something like, "Did we get a fight? Like, and we, 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 we thought that, that was them. We're just fucking pussies. We are. So uh, we are taking um, applications for the next bar fight. But uh, for our team, <laughs> not, not to fight someone, we need teammates. Uh, I, I'd like to get Kurt in our team. Oh, fuck yeah. And Kyle. Oh, Kyle knows how to fight. Okay, what was the, what was the next topic? That was a good story. Uh, uh, I love telling this story. Gonna, oh, okay. So I wanted to tell a story about having someone's wrong number. So I have a cousin who, you know, me and my cousins, it's not like we talk all the time, but shit's cool, you know? There's, it's all love. I hit them up. They hit me up. They know I love them. And I don't want to put her whole life out out there, but something happened to her at work, and, you know, it was kind of a big deal. And her her health and, like, her safety got put in effect. So I reached out to her, and I hadn't reached out to her in a very long time, but obviously I've had her fucking number Honestly, bro, hold, real and quick, we shouldn't put her story out there, but it's a dope fucking story, the way she handled it. Like, it could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, look up the news. Mm. And, um... I wanted to reach out to her because my mom was like, hey, reach out to your cousin and make sure she's okay, you know? And I was like, absolutely, I'll shoot her a text. So all I texted her was thinking of you with a heart, you know? Because what, what do you tell someone that just went through some shit? Like, oh, I'm so sorry. Or like, oh, I hope you're okay. But nah, fuck that. I just want you to know that I'm thinking of you and I'm sending some positive vibes your way. So all I put was thinking of you. And a few minutes later, she starts calling me. And that's not something we do, you know? So I'm like, touched. I'm like, oh, she wants to talk to me. So... I pick up the phone and I'm like, her, by the way, I, I called her Lana because her name was Ardiana and growing up we called her Lana and her sister Cristina, we called her Kina because we're all kids. We couldn't say their fucking names. So I answer and I'm like, hey, Lana, what's up? 
And she's like, who the fuck is this? And I was like, hello? And it does not sound like my cousin Lana, by the way. And she's like, who the fuck is this? Why are you texting this number? And I was like, is this Ardiana? Um, this Is Lana? Is your cousin Andy? And she's like, I don't know who the fuck you think you're doing. You're texting a fucking underage girl. This is my daughter's phone. You're telling her, think of her, you're fucking sicko. I'm going to call the cops. We're going to track you down. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, this was my cousin's number who was going to be 30 years old for over a decade. So if this is not her number anymore, I apologize, but I'm not trying to text your fucking little daughter. And she's going crazy on me, which I guess I get it. You know, you think a pervert's texting your fucking daughter. But I'm trying to explain, like, lady, please, like, calm the fuck down. And she's calm. I'm calling the cops right now. I'm reporting your number. And I was like, I'm, I'm just going to hang up. I'm just going to hang up. And I remember I looked. I think I was with you guys, right? And I look yeah. over at everyone. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened, dude? Yeah. Like, I just got a, accused of being a fucking. Pero. And, and I ended up getting her <laughs> real number. And I'm like, hey, whoever had your old number was very upset that I texted her. And she was, yeah, she was a <laughs> bitch. She was rude about me trying to get, like, my. Complex. Social media oh. from her and stuff, blah blah blah. So, great story I love to tell about having the wrong number, you know. But what what are you supposed to do? Send a fucking email to everyone that you had a phone number change, you know? I mean, it would be nice so that we didn't <laughs> <do> this. <laughs> so you you avoid <laughs> I mean, all these uh, issues yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to that little girl's mom. Don't give your daughter a phone. <laughs> yeah, she had said something like, <laughs> "My nine year old daughter. What the fuck? Your nine year old daughter yeah. have a phone for?" Yeah, great parenting, lady. Bitch. Um, but yeah, that story is incriminating, so let's never tell it again. <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong. I think it's a funny story. Nah, it's a hilarious story. Well, um, uh, there was another funny topic that I had written down that oh yeah, I don't says, firmly comprehend, so I wanted to talk about it. It says right here, uh, my mom's vagina. <laughs> That's your, what you want to talk your about? mom's vagina. That's what you want to talk about, Andy. That's disgusting. Uh, no, there is this um, this word floating around. In the ether. And I feel like it's it probably always been a thing, duh, because it's sexual, but I wasn't I aware How of, long have cucks been a thing? That is the question of this segment. I don't know when cucks became a thing, and I hear it more often Send now. us in your emails. How long have, do you think cucks have been around? At noaffygmail.com. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay. Okay, so this is what I want to say. Okay. Okay. When you're wa when you're watching porn, you're watching other people have sex, or, or you're whatever. imagining yourself be that person. Uh, but not only that, isn't the whole point of a cuck that they're sleeping with your significant other or your partner or whatever? Like you're getting yes. off on someone fucking. Yes, because of your you're just relationship. A Tom. Yeah, right. Because yeah, then yeah. it's like I'm just in the crowd, you know. Yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm just here for the donkey show. You're just a fly in the wall, dude. And I I would never knock anyone's whatever the fuck. You no, know what I mean? cucks are weird. But I don't understand it, like. I've never been like, oh, yeah, I would love to watch my friend fuck you while I jerk off in the corner. That's weird. It's like some Pulp Fiction shit, dude. Oh, oh, fuck. It is, man. It is. And my question to you guys. Especially, what if your girl's not into that? And she's just doing it for you. That's that's a little. She uh, loves you, then. Little... And I mean, I, the whole the whole thing is just weird. And it's. I applaud everyone. We're not going to talk about grapes right now. I, but <laughs> I applaud everyone that has, like all their open sexualness, you know, and just because I don't do it is, is fine. But that's a concept I don't, that I, think he I don't understand. Fucking closet, that's, a, that's a concept <laughs> that I don't understand of being a cuck, you know? Maybe it's, is it is it this toxic masculinity as Latinos that we have of like, <coughs> you know, you're, I don't want to use the word possession, but it's like, but, but it's vice versa, you know what I mean? Because yeah. there's all these jokes about these Latino mm -hmm. women that, oh, my man, blah, blah, blah. Like, so is it the fact that because of how we were raised, that concept doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like my mom would never sit there and watch my dad fuck another woman. Well, you know? Yeah, usually, or vice versa. It's like, usually men that are cucks, I think. Is there women cucks? I don't know. Send in your emails. Uh, <laughs> put in the comments below yeah. if you are a cuck. If you're a woman we'd cuck. We'd love to FaceTime yeah, you. If you're a woman cuck, we'd love to know more and about you. And watch you have sex with someone. Then that would make us cucks. But who, Actually, peeping toms. <laughs> See, it gets really confusing. But I thought a peeping tom is. You I guess you have to ask the person how they identify. Are you a cuck? I am a cuck. Or are you a peeping tom? <laughs> you know, like, and it's probably non-binary, so there's more. There's more terms to it. Cock. Are you? Uh, are you a cock? <laughs> are you? Uh, <laughs> this is a bad joke. <laughs> but you know what I mean, like, um, no. But cucks, dude, are just these people. 
I think they would try to say it like this because we we have to respect them, you know, and we have to respect everyone. No, we don't have to. We need to. It's <laughs> yeah. we, it's, it's nice to respect people. Jesus yeah. would respect cucks. He would. And I what, think Jesus might have been a cuck. No, I don't know? think so. He, <laughs> he hung out with whores. He didn't respect cuck. I mean, he didn't. He wasn't a cuck. But I think how they would explain it is that I just like to see my wife have a good time because, from what I've heard, from the cuck theory that I've um. And heard. you do you do know cuck stories personally? Well, I listen to a lot of cuck podcasts. <laughs> Try to say that. Cuck podcast. Cuck podcast. Cuck podcast. Cuck podcast. <laughs> So, so is it because they don't perform as well? Mm -hmm. So they want someone to do better? A lot of times it's that. They don't perform as well. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they get off on watching them fuck somebody else. And then when that person leaves, they have even crazier sex. Because it's like, oh, you like that, huh? You little slut, huh? Like, and it just gets, dude, it gets weird. I, I, sorry, no offense to nobody that is into that. But it's a little weird. It's like, it's, it, it, it's kind of like sex addiction in a way, dude, honestly. Huh. It's a little bit like sex addiction, which I am pretty like close to it. Yeah, I'm not cuck, but I <laughs> jerk off a lot. You know, Even so masturbators anonymous. I, I might have a fucking chronic, sex chronic yeah. masturbator. I mean, cause dude, how is it that I can come with somebody and then go home and jerk off again? Ver I mean, allegedly, I don't really do this. You know? <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> somebody over there said <laughs> same. <laughs> huh. So I think it's just, I think it's just that we've been, we've been. Um, even before is it that internet. it was never normalized so it's so new to us that we're not actually let's spin it around i think it's because we're so used to monogamy even though we're not fans of monogamy per se we're so used to monogamy that when somebody shares their woman it's a little weird for us you know what i mean like because that's essentially what's going on and right? i guess that's a contradicting statement because if you don't believe monogamy then being a cuck should be fine exactly you know, because it's okay saying. for so okay yeah I got you. so like, since we our, since we were raised believing in monogamy, even though you and I don't really like... Don't speak for me, bro. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. Just you want to get married. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. You, you're married to me. Yeah. But even though society was raised on monogamy, cucking... <laughs> <laughs> Verb. <laughs> to cuck. <laughs> cucking is, is a non-monogamous thing. You know, it's a polyamorous thing or whatever the fuck you say it. And know. if you're into that, then you're into that. You know what I mean? Like, so maybe it's not weird. If we're just the weirdos that believe in Jesus and Satan and and not cucking, <laughs> you know? Don't don't don't. Was cucking in the Bible? I'm sure it wasn't. There was a lot of stuff in there. Actually, I don't know. Maybe, dude, because I think I think Eve must have watched Adam fucking fuck his daughters because they have to make more kids. Apparently, dude, I will never forget the first time that like came up where the joke it doesn't make any. But sense. But then it was like, wait. If it all started with brother and sister, then we're all. Wait, were they brother and sister? Well, no, they were each other. Like, see, that's where it gets confused. But then their kids. You just each made other. a fucking fact, Andy, because they weren't brother and sister. He came, she came out of his fucking lung, and that's how they made her. She has one lung. She's just a one lung walking bitch. <laughs> and then they had sex. And then they had sex. But then their kids had sex. And their their kids had sex. And their, their kids, kids kids had sex. So it's just. It, the Bible's just full of fucking... It's in the family. <laughs> they keep it in the family. So, drop in your comments below. Do you believe in Bible God? thoughts. New Testament only. Mm. <laughs> Andy and I are starting a cult, by the way. That's not funny. <laughs> People aren't going to think that's funny. It's true. What's our cult about? The cult is about defining what the Bible actually meant. I think you're on your own on that one. Dude, no. Come I'm on. good, dude. We talked about this yesterday. No, we didn't. I think that was Sedley. That sounds like some Sedley shit that you he were just... were asleep. That he was... <laughs> oh, got it, got it. <laughs> Did I agree in my sleep? Yeah. There's another topic that... There is no cult. Um, let's talk about something more lighter than God and Jesus and uh, cults. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying cults like the, the football team. <laughs> Oh, the football team. So albums. Uh, yeah, uh, um, I know a lot of people like hearing us talk about not me playing the skin flute, <laughs> but about um, what kind of music we like and what kind of music how we play and write our songs yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. all that gay ass shit that they ask us. I time. was thinking today that we talk about the first three Incubus albums today. Like right now, talk just about real quick. Three first Incubus yeah, like albums? I'd love to have That's a conversation. That's a great idea because we both like those three albums. They're great. A lot. But you're talking after their fucking Fungus Among Us, right? Yeah, though, because right. I guess I mean, I you got an album, you know what I mean? It's like an EP, yeah. so it's it would be science. Make oh, yourself because it's more not hip hop, hip -hop it's not a mixtape. Um, I that's a really great question of what defines something as a mixtape. 
But I feel like mixtapes are usually jumping on beats and just rapping over them. So then if it's not hip hop, it's on a mixtape. I guess so, but I mean... Because I always felt like mixtape and early production was kind of the same thing. I could see that. I could see that. And I guess just the genre kind of defines it, Mm -hmm. you know? But usually an EP just means early production. So it could be a demo per se because they're early productions of like scratch tracks of songs that you're trying to work on more, get produced, (coughs) get arranged better. Yeah. Where a mixtape is just like, hey, I want people to hear me rap. So I'm going to hop on all these beats of my (laughs) friend's beats or popular beats and make a mixtape, you know? Good so, point. to start with science. By the way. How do you spell science? Incubus is one of... Those first three albums are just so monumentally influential to us. Right? For sure. Those are just bangers. Yeah. And science in particular, I think what I love about it most is that it helps me remind myself of those like harder rock metal vibes that are embedded in me. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I won't name other bands because we're sticking to this, but that... Those moments that they hit where it's just heavy distortion and big drums and cymbals. Everyone's jamming, rocking the fuck out. That's something I never want to let go. And I know that sometimes I don't quite bring that to the table in our writing. Sometimes it's more you. But granted, like, I do too. But America. that's that's something that I try to really not forget. And I really take that from the Science album mm-hmm. with how hard it can be. But then just get, like incredibly groovy and funky. Groovy is the right word. Because there's some well, sick-ass it's kind of in a way, it's kind of in a way like uh, Rage Against the Machine where like Rage Against... Except and Rage that was the other word I was going to say. That was the other word I was going to say of a band that keeps me with that hardness. It's always Incubus and Rage. Those are the two but bands if you that think about add it, that. If you think about it, both in Incubus and Rage, like, yeah, the Rage bass player, his name escapes me, but the Rage player, he's always fucking kind of grooving. Even though he's playing like some, like, I guess like metal parts, like... He's grooving, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and he's, it's kind of funky in a way. And like, Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, Incubus, he's... I don't, and I, how can I say this? It seems like the Incubus player was more of, like... He had more jazz funk influence. The bass you know? player? The bass player. Ah. Because what... That is why, me, personally speaking, I only like the first three albums because once they traded the bass player out or whatever happened, I've never looked into it, I could tell what he brought to the table as their backbone for the rhythm section. Because, dude... He was a monster. Yeah. He was a, him and the drummer would lock in, and just some of those, those grooves were just so sexy to me, dude. Yeah. And like, I think my favorite song on that, and I know it's kind of hard to say. I don't know if you want to pull up the track list, but I know this just off the back of my dick. I could argue that besides, of course, like, no, I'll say it. I think if I had to pick, I think Nebula is my favorite song, dude. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. When they hit that. That's my shit, dude. That's my shit, but so is Summer Romance. Dude. The fact that they could do both of those on the same album was definitely an influence ah, man, it's hard. for us to n- know that we're never going to be in a Especially box. Especially when like, it's like, no, mom, I don't want to leave New Jersey. <laughs> like, dude, the dude, fucking last one. Deep Inside is yeah, great. That's what I'm saying. Favorite like, Things is great. The Sir first song I ever heard by Incubus Sir ever was A Certain Shade of Green. I was working at the golf course, <coughs> and some guy that worked there was like, oh, you play in a band? He's like, do you like Incubus? And I was like, and I'm like 15, 16. I thought it was Homegirl from school. No, it was a dude at the golf course. and Remember he was like, from school? I do, but she was, she got, help me get more into them. Mm. But the first person that showed me was in the pro shop. No. Not vibes. And he put on A Certain Shade of Green, and we sat there and fucking jammed damn, out. Damn, 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 damn. I don't know, dude, because, dude... Bro, redefine vitamin. Vitamin. It comes out in, um, I think, the first Final Destination. When the fool catches on fire and falls out the window. Maybe it's the second one. I'm not sure, but, dude, it's fucking perfect when vitamin comes on. And magic medicine, dude? Yeah, no, everything is... Everything's great, head to toe. Magic medicine works. And and I'm sure you'll agree with me, but... I've really come to realize... Dude, idiot box, dude. Should I apologize? <laughs> what I, wait, is that idiot box? Yeah. Okay. It's about the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure you'll agree, but I've really noticed the older I've, I've gotten that it's hard for me to say that I'm a fan of an artist because of how we were raised and how we still have that album culture in us. <sighs> I'm a big fan of... Uh, play it real quick. I'm a oh, we big can. Fan. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah we, we don't get paid quick. for this yeah, shit. Yeah. Well, even if we did monetize, you're playing for like four seconds. But don't even forget what I was saying. Oh, this is TV. What do bum, I bum, need? Bum, bum. Tell so me who should I be? 
I, I, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, I've way. realized that I've really become a fan of projects, you know, For sure. because I am not a single person. I haven't, and I need, I need to make sure that when we approach our business side of the band and our releases that we keep that in mind of how we move forward. But like the days of albums, they tell you is dead, but obviously we've tried to keep that because there's other great artists that still do it too. So I've really become a fan of projects because once again, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit it. Like I've tried listening to Crow Left and Murder. I've tried listening to Light Grenade. I've tried listening to Eight. I've tried all these other projects, but I wasn't big fans of them. I there might've been good eight. songs on there, but it made me realize that Three out of X albums, I can call myself a fan of the artist, but it's these projects that I love, dude, mm -hmm. you know? So, my, to sum up that album is, it is such a huge influence on me because one, the bass player is a monster. Brandon's singing always motivates me to be better. If we could be half the singers he is, we'll be fine. And the hardness mm -hmm. is for that album one. For me personally, that's what that major influence is, is to keep that fucking hard rock love in my heart forever, nice. you know? Fuck yeah. Well said, brother. What about you? Well, shit, science is great. I always like science because, because of certain shit of green. Yeah, really. But I mean, I guess that's my favorite one. Then, huh? Yeah. Interesting. But no, they're all great. The guitars go crazy. The guitars, the one. guitars are fucking awesome. Fucking. And what an interesting play on his pedals and stuff. Yeah, dude. it really opened my eyes to those. Dude, and then just everything, just everything how it's arranged is beautiful, dude. Like. I mean, Serve Romance, great song. Yeah. Dun, 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 and I feel like, would dun, you agree dun, dun, that it's dun. kind of in the path that we like with our music where we don't want this super clean, produced, on the sound. We, we still want some human dirtiness to it. Yeah. And I feel like this album really captures that. It's yeah. It's for sure a late production. Like, they got money in that motherfucker. Yeah. They were in the studio. They no, have people. Sure, yeah. But it's so organic, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, for sure, yeah. I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. It's it's hard to explain how that album makes me feel. I guess that's why I can't put words in it. Mm. Because um, even without looking at the production side of it, like it's just a great fucking set of songs. Dude. As far as writing, you know huh? I mean, yeah. They were great songwriters. Yeah, and it meant it's just like, it's like that lyric that uh, John Frischant, no, Anthony Kiedis says, uh, listen to the music that makes me think. Like it always felt like Science had a bunch of like messages behind their songs. Or even like, uh, there are other albums too, you know, like they always seem to have something to say. Which is a good song. lead into Make Yourself. Yeah. Because my first thought when I hear Make Yourself is it still kept that hard vibe, but it definitely lightened up. Like I could, I guarantee you at the time, I bet you a lot of people who were huge Incubus fans during the science era, I bet you a lot of people heard Make Yourself and weren't very happy because they started taking different strokes because like Privilege still is hard, nor Fast Starts being more singy. Uh, I mean, I think Privilege is a great introduction. Song. Oh, one of my favorite songs. But songs like Stellar, Isn't songs like The Warmth, songs like... Oh, uh, Stellar's a great song. Make it, songs like Drive, songs like Battlestar Scratchula, I Miss You, Pardon Me. They started, they started quote unquote, getting some softness in there yeah. with the songwriting. I Miss You's the only one that I don't like. Oh, you're crazy. I love that really? song. You're gay as fuck. And that dude. song's in 3-4, dude. You're so gay, dude. That is a song that I teach all my students when I get away from 4-4. Four -four. Really? When you're good enough to even start comprehending something of a different time signature, Wait, no, that song's I in 3-4, dude. How, how does it go? Sing it to me. Just sing it to me, bro. You're not going to sing it to me, bro? <laughs> but I need you to know. Oh, it's not that one. Okay, I'm thinking of another song again. Damn it, Gil. Yeah, dude. I will say for his I'll whole life, that. Gil's never been huge on song titles, to be honest with you. Or much of anything, really. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know my lyrics There's not a lot to our own songs. Game. But uh, once again, a great album of you could tell their growth. And especially Brandon as a songwriter and the band that was willing make to, a good point. to grow and compromise together without sacrificing yeah. who they were. Yeah, you make a and, good point. And once again, everyone hates it, but it's just my mentality. I also saw, and it's not like they were doing this on purpose, but it was this thing where now you're writing songs that you can really pitch. Yeah. You know? Like, dude, Pardon Me might be their biggest song, arguably. You oh, know? One of their biggest ones. It still had their feel, but it wasn't fucking... That's what Make Yourself? That's how I make yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. man, I always get that one in the towards the very end of the album. I like make yourself. 
I always confuse it with, with the next one, which is called Morning View. Morning View. And Morning View, I could see how someone who dealt with Make Yourself once they heard Morning View was like, nah, I'm out. I actually But really, I love Make I Yourself. Really like Make, the only song I that like I could Morning View. Okay, the only song I skip on Morning View. There's two actually. I'm not gonna lie to you. Mexico. Kind I of skip sucks. circles. Circles is alright. It's a little. It's okay. I know but you don't I like the warning, it. which is ridiculous. I don't like warning. I know you don't. It's ridiculous. I don't know man. what it is about it. You know what it was? I and I could be totally wrong. I could be totally wrong. As a listener, it felt overproduced. Mm, it I felt overproduced, and it felt like someone made a compromise for that song, or that the song didn't progress enough. In my opinion, I feel like they could have had some different parts on there. Or, you know what? Maybe it's just the drums. Maybe there's times where, like, the guitar goes to hit and the drums don't hit with it that I'm like, I just feel like. I don't like know. When, like, when, when you make yourself jerk off because you're bored Tired. and then you don't get a good nut and you're like, why did I even fucking do this? And then your balls bother you and stuff. That's what that song felt like to me. Like, I still came, but it was like, this was okay. Why would you do that to yourself? Huh? Why would you do that to yourself? Oh, because you never do that to yourself? I always jerk off for fun. Yeah. And they're <laughs> no, never I as good as the ones that you... I know what you mean. That you I spit you in your mean. own hand and shit, I, I, you know? I like warning because, again, because it's the message, dude. Like, don't waste your life. No, the lyrics are great. Don't waste your life, dude. It's definitely the music, the musicality of it, yeah. or the, like, arrangement that I didn't like. And as you just told the, whoever fucking listens to these things, whether they go on the ether or not, <laughs> um, I, I am not very good at listening to lyrics. But that song, I, I, I remember listening to the lyrics very young and being like, holy shit, this is fucking beautiful. And mm -hmm. that's when I started being like, I need to listen to the lyrics more. Like, is this what people are singing? And like, yeah. this is a one band, you know? Like, yeah. what, what, what else were people saying? Brandon has quite the way with words. Dude. Yeah, he really Always does. Always been very impressive. He really does. And the way that he can scream and then go back to... It reminds... Yeah, no, you know I, who, I'm a big fan of that. You know whose lyrics I'm not that impressed with? Who's Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> This is a different type, man. Simple ass fucking lyrics. So huh? we've all, we always got even the other day. Fucking shout out, homeboy. He was talking about you know how the lyrics need to work and stuff. Oh yeah. But dude, a lot of these old. Okay, so we played a wedding recently, and we learned a bunch of covers for it. And dude, some of these songs were so, like Boogie Shoes. The lyrics were super simple. Bro. Boogie Oogie Oogie. Super simple. Like you think we sing about our dicks? Super mm -mm. simple, dude. They just did it in a different way, but they're singing. We're about just their a little crocs. more black and white about it, huh? We just bring you the news how it is, not like CNN and Fox. We tell it how it is. Boom. <laughs> to the butt. To the butt. Boom to the butt. That's our new slogan. We're going to make stickers that just say boom to the butt. Send us your emails if you want some. What's up? You think we're done here? I or? think we're done. We got um, stickers coming. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We used to think it was super corny for people to say shit like that. If you go be in Kingsman, Arizona, March 18th. 17th. 18th is the show? 17th. 17th? 17th. 17th. Friday 17th. I thought we left Friday and we played Saturday. No, we played Friday. We played Friday. Yeah, we played play Friday. Okay. <laughs> you want to finish your message? Go go watch us play. Kingsman, Arizona. Yes, sir. What, 17. Do you know the, the venue? I don't remember it. Is it, in, Black, is it in the calendar? Black, yeah, it's like called Black Brewery or hey. Black Bridge Brewery or some shit like that. Mm. And let's be honest, a lot of you are not going to be in Kingsman, Arizona, so it's whatever. Yeah. But hey, just in case, Blackbridge Brewery, I need good Blackbridge job. Brewery, Kingsman, 17th. Arizona. We'll be there on the seventeenth. Um, As subscribe always. to our channel if you watch this on the do the Dad Podcast. Shout out to the boys from that. Uh, you gotta you gotta support your people. So please like, share, comment, all that bullshit. I hate that we have to remind you, but it's just so important to us because you know the three hundred of you that watch this. If you put a comment, all of a sudden we got three hundred comments, and then when these labels and these Booking agents and all these people go to look at our shit. They're like, damn, they got views. They got real interactions because real people listen to it. We know that we're speaking to a certain clientele, but we love doing this for you guys because you ask us to do this more often. Um, that's going to be in trouble for, huh? No, actually, it didn't. Oh, we'll tell that one next time. Yeah, we'll tell that one next time. Follow us on Instagram. Much love to you. We fucked your mother. Your mother's a whore. Bye-bye. <laughs>